Hey everyone, Steven here, and today I'm reviewing the Rocket Torch USB microphone, and I'll be using the microphone to do all of the voiceover work, which means this is what the microphone sounds like. I'm currently using the Whisper pattern, which is a Rocket proprietary pickup pattern. I'll be testing the other patterns in a little bit, and I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. That's a sigh of relief on my part because I haven't been too impressed with Rocket's new lineup after reviewing the Cone Pro Air wireless mouse and the Sin Pro Air wireless headset. I'll make sure links for those videos pop up now and at the end of the video. With that being said though, I had my reservations about trying this product, but I'm really impressed with this. This is the style and quality that I love about Rocket's products, and I hope this is a better sign of things to come. Now so far I've been using the microphone with no adjustments to it in Premiere Pro, so you can hear this in isolation, and it does sound good, but you will hear that grainy background noise if you don't use a program like NVIDIA Broadcast to filter that out. I'll be utilizing adaptive noise reduction in Premiere Pro from here until the audio test, so it sounds cleaner, but I did want to make sure everyone knows that's why the audio will sound better. To start, let's get into the specs and features first before I cover what I like and dislike about the Torch microphone. The box for the Rocket Torch is top notch, and although that really doesn't matter, Rocket always gives a good first impression with their packages. Inside you'll find the studio grade microphone. Side note about that, Rocket has that all over their package and user manual by the way, so I think they want people to understand that this is a studio grade microphone. You'll find the Torch mixer stand which makes this more unique amongst its competitors, three different connection cables, and the user manual. For the cables, you will find these are labeled for their use, which I love when companies do that personally. You have a 1 15 centimeter or 5.9 inches USB-C to USB-C cable. This is used when you're going to actually put your microphone on a boom arm. So it connects your microphone to your mixer when you're going to be using it and it needs more cable length. You have one 1.8 centimeter or 0.7 inches USB-C to USB-C cable for connecting the mic when it's actually mounted on the mixer instead of a boom arm. And then you have one 2 meter 6.5 foot USB-A to USB-C cable for connecting this base to your PC. And this is actually how you will be able to utilize the microphone with your computer. These all have a threaded insulation instead of the rubber insulation, by the way, which is a huge plus in my opinion. Opinion. Before I cover the mixer stand and the features this has, let's cover the tech specs. The sample slash bitrate is 48 kilohertz at 24 bits with the optional selection of 44.1 kilohertz. The microphone has two 14 by 6.5 millimeter capsules that are rocket proprietary. The pickup patterns include cardioid, stereo, and whisper. The frequency response is 20 Hz to 20 kHz. This has a max sound pressure level of 110 decibels. The headphone jack is a zero latency 3.5 mm 4 pole headphone socket. The headphone and stand together weigh 500 grams, which is 1.1 pounds, and the microphone by itself weighs 290 grams, which is 0.64 pounds. So now that I've covered these specs, let's look at what you find on the mixer starting with the front. On the far right hand side you will find the gain slider. In the middle you have your volume dial that controls your PC volume and you can actually press this in to mute the microphone audio as well. And on the far left you have the audio pattern dial. For the audio pattern and gain the lights on the microphone adjust to help you know what it is doing which is really cool. For the audio pattern colors we have blue for whisper, yellow for cardioid, purple for stereo, and if you mute the mic, it will turn red. For the gain, the light bars on the outside of the mic will rise or fall, indicating your gain levels. A quick side note here is the audio pattern dial has a power icon, which if you switch to that, it will turn the microphone and lights off. In the very front of the mixer, you will find the live and mute light. This obviously lets you know if you're muting or using the microphone, but this has two inputs to change that. The first is by pressing the volume dial like I mentioned earlier, and the second is by waving your hand over a sensor at the top of the microphone, which is a really cool feature, which I know is in a few other microphones, but I've not used one that has it myself, and I quite like it. Now some people might not like this at all, as I could see the potential for accidentally muting the mic if you move over this. Maybe you move your hands a lot when you're gaming, but the good news is you can actually change how sensitive this is and even turn it off on the back of the mixer. 
This of course brings us to the back of the mixer, which starting on the far right hand side, you will find the brightness button, which changes the brightness levels of the lights on the microphone. And it has five different levels, which are 0% off, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Next to this, you have the contactless quick mute distance adjuster button, which has three different settings. One bar means the contactless mute is turned off. Two bars, mute distance is low. And three bars means the mute distance is high. I've tested the low and high settings, and I personally haven't noticed a big difference between the two in terms of sensitivity and actual distance away from the sensor. Next to this, you will find the USB-C to microphone input, followed by the USB-C to PC input, and at the far left, you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is an audio pass-through, so you can use it to listen to the audio from your PC, or you can use the side tone hardware with Windows 10 to monitor your own voice when using the mic. You do have the option to mount this on a mic arm, which is easy to do, but I would recommend a regular mic arm and not something like my Blue Compass Premium mic arm, which is more ideal for heavy mics like my Shure SM7B. This mic is so light that even with the tension dials turned to their highest, it still tries to shoot the arm straight. If you do mount this to a mic arm, it does mean you will have to be okay with having the mixer separate instead of on the microphone, which I think some people will actually prefer, but for those who want it on or right next to the mic, you'll want to be mindful of how you're going to use this. Having this sit on the mixer means it will sit on your desk and the distance and position away from you might be tricky, so keep that in mind. The last thing I want to cover here is the Neon software, which is Rocket's new software that is very much in beta, and the only thing that it will do for you with this microphone is allow you to turn on the AMO lighting for the Rocket symbol on the front of the microphone. That's literally all it does at the moment. So now it's time to cover the audio pattern, so I'm going to read to you the description of each pattern from the manual while using it with no adaptive noise reduction, just pure unchanged audio. Also, the gain is turned to roughly 50% with this. First up is the whisper pattern. This is great for when you have to be at your quietest, but still need to be heard. Ideal for nighttime gaming, chatting, etc. Next is the cardioid pattern. Perfect for any solo situation, whether that's streaming, gaming, podcasting, or web calls. Last, we have stereo. This is ideal for capturing live instruments, vocals, or ASMR. Great for any time you want to capture increased definition and depth. A quick side note here is that with the whisper pattern, you do get that increased in gain essentially. And with the cardioid pattern and the stereo pattern, I did have to adjust this in post by increasing the gain by about five decibels so that you could actually hear it. Whisper is the loudest, then cardioid, then stereo. Now that I've covered the specs and we've done the sound test, let's talk about what I like about this microphone. Overall, I really like this mic and for $99, I think it packs great sound, aesthetics, and a ton of value with its features. I think the mixer is great to have and gives you a good amount of control over everything. Now you will find most of this on a microphone, but the extra touches here with the lighting patterns letting you know the gain levels and the audio pattern, the touchless mute sensor, and the built-in pop filter make this as a whole package very impressive. The audio patterns here sound great even unfiltered, but with NVIDIA Broadcast and other apps allowing you to filter out background noise, I think the pickup pattern is becoming more important in terms of its sensitivity, and the whisper pattern here allows me to still get good audio pickup without feeling like I need to be extra close to the microphone. So as I said, overall, I am very impressed with this. This is the type of quality that I expect from Rocket, and they definitely deliver with this microphone. But now that I've covered what I like about this mic, let's cover what I don't like. I think the first big one is the software, which is just a waste in my opinion. Nothing against the AMO lighting, as I've used it a lot with my other Rocket peripherals, but the fact that that's actually the only pattern that you can choose seems odd. The Swarm software allows for a lot of variation when it comes to the lighting, and for this to just have AMO is a big letdown. I don't think it should guide your purchasing decision at all, I'm just a little let down by Rocket with that. I'm hoping this actually gets some updates here soon that will allow us to actually change these things, 
but at the moment it's just a waste in my opinion it's not even worth necessarily downloading so if you get this it's not something that you need unless you just want to use the amo lighting for or whatever reason, maybe you have other peripherals and that's how you want it to feed in that ecosystem, you will most likely be running Swarm software if you have certain products though, and then running Neon software also. So now you have to run two separate apps. With this, it is just actually applying this to the logo as well. It doesn't affect anything else, just the logo at the front of the microphone. Another thing that I haven't liked with this microphone is the pop filter. I like the fact that it's built in, but you've probably picked up on it at some point in this. And I'm sitting a decent distance away from this, but it is still picking up on harsh P's with this. So you'll hear that pop sound and so it's one of those things where if maybe you're noticing that you may have to get another pop filter on top of the one that's already built in so kind of let down by that i actually have extras i haven't used it with this i just wanted it to just be the product itself but i would have liked to have seen that just a little bit better in terms of its implementation where it's just not picking up on it as much as it is right now the only other thing I haven't liked with this is the length of the USB-C cable that is meant for using this with a mic arm. It's got a decent length, but I doubt it will be long enough for most people, which means you'll need to buy your own cable. If this was another two to three feet longer, I think it would cover most people's length needs for mounting this, but you can always buy one if you do need the extra length, and they actually aren't that expensive luckily, but it's just should have just been a little bit longer in my opinion. Well, that's actually going to be it for the negatives as this is a really good product and I'm so relieved by that as this seems like the standard I'm used to with Rocket. The fact that this is their first attempt at making a standalone microphone and it is such a great quality one has me excited to see what they do in the mic space in the future. Let me know if you have any questions about this microphone or what you think about the audio quality in the comment section. And I'll have a link for this in the description for anyone who wants to pick it up, as well as links for my other Rocket reviews. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.